This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. The body of a San Diego man who disappeared while swimming near Tijuana over the holiday weekend has been found. Mexican authorities and family confirm they found the body in the area where 27 year old Victor Villarreal Garcia was last seen. Villarreal went missing Friday night trying to swim to a sailboat off the coast. His family says they had no contact with him and didn't realize he was missing until the next day. On Friday night, San Diego police officers found a pickup truck stolen from the CBP station in Imperial Beach and inside the truck was a U.S. Border Patrol canine and at least one weapon. Sean Farrar was arrested and now faces multiple charges, but this isn't the first time. In 2022, Supreme Court records show he stole a truck from Naval Amphibious Base Coronado. That same year, he was found in Otay Mesa behind the wheel of a Humvee stolen from the same Coronado Navy base. Farrar was charged in that case with grand theft and evading with reckless driving. Farrar is scheduled for arraignment tomorrow. The murder trial in the case of a missing South Bay mom, Maya Miliete, has been pushed back. Her husband and accused killer, Larry Miliete, requested another delay after switching his defense team late last year. It will now begin on January 6th of next year. The new date is one day before the fourth anniversary of Maya's disappearance. Her body has never been found. Larry pleaded not guilty and denied, it, denied murdering his wife in an exclusive jailhouse interview with NBC7 Investigates. If you were heading to Naval Base San Diego this morning and were rerouted or perhaps stuck in traffic, uh, an early morning security incident closed one of the entrance gates. A driver tried to enter the base without stopping at the guard shack. NBC7's Dana Williams has details on exactly what happened. We now know this was an unmarked car that was part of the base security team. The driver tried to enter this gate off of 32nd Street on Norman Scott Road without stopping, and that's when the security guard, who wasn't sure if the car belonged to base, engaged the barricades. Naval Base San Diego was on high alert this morning with military police and cones blocking one of the main 24-7 entrances. The incident happened shortly after 4 a.m. when an unmarked car came down Norman Scott Road and drove directly through Gate 43 without stopping to talk to the security guard. Naval Base San Diego Public Affairs Officer Krishna Jackson says that's when the guard decided to hit the button that caused barricades to pop up. Three people were in the car when that happened to our civilian officers and one is active military. They were all taken to the hospital for evaluation and at last check two of them are still being looked at and one of the civilian officers was released. Jackson also shared that base security often rolls through entrance gates while in marked cars but obviously the guard who was there did not realize this unmarked car was in fact also security. Now there is a step-by-step -step investigation into what happened as well as the decision timeline of everyone who was involved. From Naval Base San Diego, Dana Williams, NBC7. The gate is closed for the investigation. In the meantime, traffic is being rerouted to Gate 29 on Main Street. Today, the Port of San Diego is set to proclaim its own local emergency over the Tijuana River sewage crisis. It's not the first time the port is getting involved. Last year, commissioners sent a letter to Governor Newsom urging more support. Despite some money being awarded for repairs and upgrades, the problem is still far from being fixed. Last month, the county rolled out a new website to inform people of any health concerns or impacts. The port's emergency proclamation will be voted on at its commissioner meeting this afternoon. And NBC7 has been covering this crisis for years, diving into the problems and solutions. You can find out more by searching Toxic Tide on our website, NBC7.com. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the afternoon, it's going to be another beautiful day. We're actually going to be a little bit milder in some areas, 77 for a high inland, around 70 at the coast, mountains and deserts. Beautiful weather there, but tomorrow we cool down. We'll be only in the low 60s for the coast tomorrow. Slight chance of an afternoon evening shower. It's going to be cloudy. Friday, we have rain moving in. It's also going to be breezy and chilly. But so far, the weekend looks really good and dry. Gusts up for Friday for the coast and inland valleys around 35 miles per hour. Mountains will be seeing snow Friday. Thank you, Sheena. What do you want to see in the city of San Diego's next fire chief? How you can make your voice heard as a nationwide search gets underway. That's coming up next. 
NBC7 in Telemundo 20 responds, getting results for a local family. Her sister passed away in the Philippines. I love my sister so much. Leaving behind thousands in a bank account her family couldn't access for years. Just frustrating. Until NBC7 responds, stepped in. I think that same day the bank called and they said, oh, you're all set. We're going to send you a check. Getting them the money. My sister is going to be happy now. And helping to fulfill one of her sister's dying wishes. NBC7 in Telemundo 20 responds, fighting for you and your money. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. Tonight you have a chance to weigh in on the recruitment process for a new San Diego fire chief. Chief Stoll is retiring in August. He's a San Diego native and the 18th chief the department has had. He started back in 1988 and has held every rank, including several years as fire chief for the Heartland Fire and Rescue Department in the El Cajon and Lemon Grove areas. He has taken on a number of issues during his time in the position, including the unsafe camping ordinance. Our firefighters are here to provide medical, rescue, and firefighting service to everyone who lives, works, and visits the city of San Diego. We feel this ordinance will help create a safer environment for everyone. The city is holding two meetings for community members to share their input on who should replace him. The first meeting is happening tonight at the MLK Junior Recreation Center on Skyline Drive at 530 p.m. The second will be tomorrow night, same time at the Kearney Mesa Recreation Center on Armstrong Street. The city asks anyone who plans on attending to RSVP online. In Poway, city leaders have greenlit a plan for a major housing development called Harmon Ranch. Developers want to build 63 homes on 11 and a half acre lot on Oak Knoll Road. Since the plot of land is so small, the developer is asking for special approval from the city council. Typically, a plot that size would allow for 58 homes. Locals were divided over the idea. I'm concerned about traffic on Poway Road. Poway Road is already congested. There's clearly a need for housing in our country. Whether it's affordable or not affordable, that's a different argument, but there's a need for housing. A group called Poway Voices collected signatures from nearly 500 people who live in Poway who were against the development. Despite community opposition during their public comment period, the measure passed 4-1. to one. Six seawalls will be built along the beach in Del Mar as part of a bigger project to protect the rail tracks. Two dozen steel beams are already stacked up near 18th Street. Rail service will continue during construction and Sandag says the project will not affect beach access either. Construction on the whole project is expected to last three years. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, beautiful weather again around 70 at the coast, mid 70s inland, mid 60s in the mountains. More clouds moving overnight tonight and tomorrow. We're going to see even more clouds, much cooler tomorrow, so don't be surprised about that. Late rain chance tomorrow, then we have showers on Friday with a chance for thunderstorms. It's going to be breezy and chilly Friday, but we do dry up for the weekend, so the weekend looks much better. Mountains on Friday will be seeing snow, but then the weekend is looking good. You can take a deep breath this year, but don't quadruple the amount of time in your shower. Okay, so we don't have to worry about drought for the foreseeable future. Governor Gavin Newsom and Department of Water Resources Engineers released the snowpack report in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Good news here, we are slightly above average so far this year. The snow represents about 40% of the state's water supply. Here in San Diego, the Water Authority also says we're looking good because of investment in infrastructure and help from Mother Nature. We have a lot more water than we would on, in an average water year, and there's still more rain in the forecast. Newsom also unveiled a new statewide water plan focusing on capturing more of the snow melt when it melts and preparing for when there isn't enough. They plan to build a new reservoir north of Sacramento, which is expected to hold a year's worth of water for 3 million households. More coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.